Hey, it's Allie Edwards and welcome back to another video using the rainbow scrapbook kit as a jumping off point for a project. For the next thing that I wanted to do, one of the things that's on my list for this year, for documenting this year, is to do a garden notebook or, you know, a garden traveler's notebook or essentially to document the story of my yard um, in one of these traveler's notebooks. And so we've offered these Art of Noticing notebooks a few times in the past. I think there's probably some available on there. It might be a yellow cover uh, instead of the gray. Here's an example of the one that I did last year. This was for during the summer. During the summer, I decided that the summer documenting I was going to do was gonna be in this notebook. And so I really had fun doing this last year. Like it was a great departure for me personally from um, more traditional scrapbooking or scrapbooking, you know, on a with, a with a straight background and having a little book that I just simply built stories related to the summer in. And you can see definitely some pieces of my yard popping up in here alongside our summer adventures. And so when I started thinking about other things that I could do with the rainbow kit. One of them was creating a traveler's notebook that's similar to this one um, that is just focused on what's happening in the yard. So what are the things that are growing right now? What am I doing in the yard? You know, what am I anticipating? What are the tasks? Those sorts of things. And I've never done that kind of documenting in a really organized way for my yard. And I know that some people, something that some people do, lots of gardeners keep very meticulous notes about, you know, when things are planted, how things are growing or not growing, observations on the process. For me, what I'm looking at doing is just essentially creating a home to, to jot down those kinds of stories or to document in one place stories related to my yard over the course of this next year. So you can see I put a little note on there, Garden 2020. And so what I'm gonna show you in this video is essentially how I'm going to set this up. I created a little around the yard circle. I know I've done this before because I looked for it and I couldn't find it, but you guys will probably, somebody out there will know where this was before. But I made another one of these and if you click over to my blog post, you can download this as word art if that's something that you wanna do. I'm just gonna put this on the outside. You can definitely make your own traveler's notebook if that's something that you'd like to do. You can use pattern papers at, for the cover. I just don't really care about the covers as much and so for me it's way more about the inside so I'm just using something that I already have here in the office which is one of these Art of Noticing notebooks. Inside the Art of Noticing notebooks they have a very simple structure which says today I noticed with the date it's got a place for a photo or a powder paper or embellishments. You can kind of do whatever you want. In here I did a variety of different things, right? Sometimes it was photos, sometimes it was a map, sometimes it was pattern paper that I just wrote directly on top of, sometimes it's a full page photo, just lots of different options. And in this one, I don't think I was using the, um, let's see, I didn't really use the today I noticed as much, I just was basically using this as a base, but you could, absolutely use that for some of the stories that you might want to tell. And maybe for you, like, you know, you don't, aren't into gardening or you don't like doing a yard, but maybe you have some other topic that you would like to document over time, that you want to create a home for it. And doing it in a traveler's notebook is a really fun way to do that. So my plan here is that I want to do something in the beginning. Um, and I think I'm probably going to use this rainbow powder paper and then this will get adhered right on the inside. I pulled out a couple other things. One of them is this plastic word. This was from the Begin Story Kit that was our January kit earlier this year. And I kind of love the idea of either putting this in here or figuring out a way to make it um, turn kind of as its own little page. And maybe that will go on a different page here. I'm not sure yet, but I pulled that out. Kind of goes great with the colors in this rainbow kit too. So probably gonna adhere that down. Uh, one of the recent add-ons that we had, I think this one was maybe um, from the Delight, like when the, when the Delight story kit happened, that was the one that, that um, got, had delayed shipping, but we had these really cute vellum um, envelopes and tags. And so these are here sitting on my desk as something that I want to incorporate. So I was kind of thinking that maybe this could be the intro to my garden documenting and I could type something up or write something on the tag here and that would be the home for my journaling. I also had pulled out from the rainbow kit these the fun um, 
circles here, the vellum circles, and maybe I'm gonna add those in there and those could be homes for the date or something like that. I'm just kind of thinking of, you know, how I might wanna set this up in the beginning. And then my plan is, is that I'm gonna go immediately into uh, March. And so here's a photo from my yard just a couple days ago. I also have these fun plastic words that were an add-on that we offered earlier this year. They're the months of the year. I think that these are all gone now for subscribers, but I have them. And so I was kind of thinking of, you know, maybe this would be something fun to add on here or add on here, signifying that the next few pages are going to be about what's happening in March, right? What are the things that I'm doing in my yard in March? And what are some of the stories that I might want to tell? Or I might just want to write notes down, right? That this is the kind of thing where I could just be doing like, okay, you know, here's the date and what did I plant? And then maybe I put a photo over here. So maybe some of the pages in this particular project will be um, more scrapbooky, right? And other ones might just be more a place to hold notes related to my yard. So I'm kind of excited to dive into this one and see what it can evolve into over the course of the year in my yard, right? So for me, yard work pretty much starts now in March. And we, for me, it's, it's not the like mowing the lawn and that sort of thing. It's more, what am I planting? Um, what kind of maintenance sorts of things am I doing? But I love having a jumping off point and I love that I can incorporate lots of, of different pattern papers from the rainbow kit over the course of the next few months as we you know go into what was I gonna say you know I probably stop in the yard in October like once the pumpkins are done and I grew pumpkins last year and I loved them they were just like the coolest thing to grow and then those were on my porch I definitely want to grow those again here's one of the patterns that I used in the uh, for one of the other projects I did it just happens to be the perfect size so I will probably that will get added in here somewhere or maybe I want to have that be there and I'm going to do a smaller version of the photo and put that right there. That could be an option. Um, lots of different things or maybe you know I'm going to put this in here and it's going to have March on top. I'm just going to dive in. I'm going to dive in and start playing and adding some of these uh, rainbow pieces in here kind of getting things set up for documenting success. All right, diving right in here, I'm actually gonna end up doing three spreads in this video, which is why it ends up being a little bit longer. Um, one is essentially just getting, having an introduction to the notebook. So like, why am I doing this? And um, you know, a little bit of embellishing that sort of thing. Then I'm gonna do one that's a story of what the yard looks like right now. And then I'm gonna do another one that is my yard goals. Um, so I'm using a combination of things from the Rainbow Scrapbook Kit, as well as things from my stash and a little bit of the March Stories by the Month Kit too. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as we get in here. I think that this kind of little project might be a great place for some of those Stories by the Month Kit pieces, especially for me, somebody who's not doing Project Life as regularly or not doing Project Life like I have in the past. Um, I, I wanted to find a way to use some of the Stories by the Month stuff that would feel authentic to the kinds of stories that I want to tell right now. Like I'm still not interested in diving back into full on project life, but I love the idea of using pieces from the stories by the month kit to tell the story of what's happening in the yard, which is a, a chunk of, of how I like spending my time. So you can see what I'm doing in here now. One of the things I love about working with these notebooks that are already created is essentially you're just building on the inside of them. And I'm still using red line tape right now because I continue to have that issue with the adhesive. I've seen in some of the comments this past week uh, on YouTube specifically that other people have had issues with ordering the adhesive Someone also let me know that they think that the, that Scotch is um, actually like revamping it and doing a new outer cartridge. So I have lots of the outer cartridges, it's the inner cartridges that I need. So I'm going to see if I can find the newer outer cartridge version. Anyway, long story short. What I did there was use the red line tape and that rainbow pattern paper to add that onto the first page in my notebook here and then I am going to use the one of those vellum um, envelopes with the tag that was a past add-on. What I'm doing right now is I'm pulling out the March uh, Stories by the Month kit and looking at a few of the things in there. It's a really actually a great one for pairing with the Rainbow Scrapbook kit if you happen to have both. The colors are really um, 
complementary uh, along with that begin story kit too. As you can see, I've used some of those pieces. One of the things that I did in a past uh, notebook when, when I was working on it last summer is I did have some things that I added in. And so I'm looking at doing that as well. I was also thinking that the March gratitudes card, that three by four card that's included in each one of the stories by the months kit kits this year. I thought that might be a really fun thing to include in here and something that I can continue, continue to do as the year goes on um, with each one of those kits. I pulled out one of my embroidery floss boxes there that has my stash of stuff inside and started looking through it to see what sort of embellishments that I might want to add into the inside cover. I pulled out a couple of word phrase uh, chipboard pieces from a past release and am considering adding those onto a chipboard piece from the Stories by the Month kit. That's that little rainbow looking watercolor one. And I end up finding three, uh, three little sentiments there from those um, chipboard word phrase. Sometimes people call them refrigerator magnet sort of things. I just call them phrase, word phrase, chipboard pieces. Anyway, I found three of them that I felt like would work um, to add onto the chipboard. So I've got a couple layers of chipboard there. And then I also knew that I wanted to add something into that, the inside of the cover as well, but I wasn't sure exactly what that was going to look like yet. I did add a small silver brad onto that chipboard tag from the Stories by the Month kit. Just, I like the look of that as well. Then I measured the tag that was included in the inside of that vellum pocket so that I could print out um, journaling on top. So I went over to my computer, I made a box that was the size of the, um, of the tag and then added my journaling on top. I ran it through the printer the first time and it went on there crooked because I didn't have a little piece of adhesive on the bottom, but I went ahead and did that and then re-ran it through the printer and had a better version. So then what I decided to do on the back with the part that was, um, printed incorrectly on there was to add some of the rainbow pattern paper. And I could have done that, the rainbow piece that I already used, but I decided to pull out the extra that I had that was that black pattern paper. I used that earlier uh, this week in one of the other rainbow projects, actually one of the, one of the ones that had a flip out page. So I'm adding red line tape again on top here, and then I'm going to adhere that pattern paper, the black pattern paper, but really any of them could work. You could also do a photo on the other side if you had more photos that you wanted to include. When I'm starting out a project like this, I don't always start with photos uh, because I'm not really sure exactly what kinds of photos I'm going to be including in here over the course of the year. So I could have included something that was like, you know, a spring flower uh, picture or something like that, or even just a picture of the, the yard, the bear yard as it is right now. Um, but I ended up just adding the pattern paper on top because that was the perfect place, especially for a, um, you know, not a full page, right? I just needed a little bit to be able to put that on the back. And then I'm using my swim, sw my swimmers, my scissors to trim off the extra. And then I'll be grabbing my, we are memory keepers hole punch to punch that hole in the top. And then using a little bit of ribbon from a, like a grass grain grass grain, I think is what it's called, ribbon um, set that I got off of Amazon, I think last year before December Daily, and it's been um, a good one that I, that I really like. So I, I really like how that tag turned out. I love that it's an intro into this project and into kind of what I see happening in this little notebook over the next, you know, little bit of time, which for me will be, you know, March to probably October. So an opportunity to have a holding place for stories related to my yard just makes me really happy. I feel like this is a, makes a lot of sense. So for you in your own life, you might have some other sort of hobby or activity that you want to document all in one place, right? Obviously, if you don't like to work in the yard, this might not be the thing that you're going to document, but maybe you like to go hiking or maybe you like to play games with your kids or you like to, or you want to document just stories about your pet, right? Like all kinds of different things could be used in, in one of these notebooks. It's just especially fun, I think, to mix things up and have it be in a different size. I will say though, that I really am loving so far this year, just committing to a six by eight generally. So most of my stories are going into six by eight, but I really like the idea of having something specific for um, the yard and just being able to tell that overarching story of 
of what happens in my yard over the course of um, of a growing season. Like, what does it look like in April? What does it look like in June? Um, those kinds of things. So loved using that tag. Definitely planning to um, incorporate some more of those tags in this little project. I think this is also a really good time and this is what I did as I was setting this up. As I was going through my stash of stuff, especially the things that I have now organized in those embroidery block, embroidery floss boxes, was pulling out things that were that felt like they could really support stories of my yard. Um, you know, whether they were embellishments um, or they were stickers or other little things that I was like, oh, this would work really great in that album. And so you, you can see here, I started kind of pulling things out. I decided I did want to use those vellum circles on the inside cover and then I was going through my stash to see okay what kinds of circle embellishments and or other embellishments would I like to add here so I did ended up doing a chipboard circle a puffy circle that said shine bright and I think that that was from the great outdoors collection and then I did use one of the plastic butterflies which was also from the great outdoors collection and we do have some of those um, available if you're looking for if you're looking for some butterfly embellishments. I really liked having the variety there. I think it would have looked great with um, three circles too, but this is really gonna depend on what you might have in your own collection of embellishments. I also grabbed another little word phrase thing. I think, what does it say? No, I can't see. It says, um, get outside, which is obviously goes along just right with this. And then adding a little bit of red line tape there to the chipboard adhesive on the bottom, which talks about learning. That's another thing that is, is a big piece of working in the yard for me. It's a lot, it's a lot about learning, right? Learning as you go. So I'm going to use red line tape to adhere those into that inside cover. And I really like how this, how I started this one off. Like I felt like I had a good combination of color and story and shape and some embellishments that are in alignment with the kinds of stories I want to tell here. Um, one of the things I like about working in these notebooks too is that you don't have to do the same thing all the time, right? Like each spread is its own little thing. So I can start off with this and then I can have some spreads that are super simple. Maybe they're just a photo enlargement and I can have other spreads that are, you know, more product based. Or like I said in the beginning of the video, I can have ones where I'm just taking notes right? Or jotting down things that are happening in the yard or questions that I have or those kinds of things. I like, really, really like that. So next up for the next spread, what I decided to do was do um, a couple different pictures of the daffodils. This is kind of the main thing that's happening in the yard right now. So I printed one that was four and a quarter by or yeah, eight, four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And I usually trim it down just a little bit after I adhere it down on there. And then I measured the square there on the other side. It's not a perfect square. Um, I think it's like three and a quarter by three and a half, something along those lines um, to fit inside the square. I would recommend getting out your ruler. And so that's what I decided to do for this first one, right? Like I'm showing this is what's happening in um, March in my yard. And then I'm going to just hand write right into that today I noticed space. So again, that reminder that you can use it how it was designed, which is just to, you know, talk a little bit about how, you know, what are you noticing in your life, right? which is can be a practice in and of itself. Um, you can do it that way. You can have things that are typed up and added in lots and lots of different options. I really like these one, this opportunity here to be able to use the full page photo. Um, it's a nice, it's a nice option. You know, you can obviously do, I could have done pattern paper there that, that was, um, in addition to the photo, it just really kind of depends on, on what you're doing, what kind of story you want to tell at a particular point in time. So I think it's going to be real interesting to see how many spreads I get into this project this year. These little notebooks can get super thick. So I can totally envision that maybe I would end up doing more than one. Last year in my summer one, I had, I'm counting it right now, I had um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. I did 13 different stories in my summer notebook last year. So I can definitely do at least that many. And I had extra pages uh, left over. It just kind of depends on how you want to approach that. Um, and so what you can see what, here, what I'm doing next is there's with 
the way that we, the way that I approach these notebooks, there's always a lot of cutting, right? There's a little bit of cutting extra things off. There's also rounding the corners because I like how the rounded corners look on the overall notebook. Uh, so that's another thing that I end up doing on a lot of these tasks. That's a lot of what this is. And I think this is a great project where, you know, sometimes you might do one spread and other days you might do a bunch in a row. You've got lots of different options. Oh, actually, so I have another spread. I thought I only did three, but I did another one. So here's one that I did after I did that initial one. I had a day this past weekend where I worked outside. And what I was doing then was um, getting some roses ready and building a raised bed. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Before then, though, I want to come back to this. This is from the Design Story Kit, actually. It's one that I've, a little embellishment that I've hold, held on to for a long time. It says plan in progress, which is a great example of supporting a story about the yard, right? A lot of things require planning. And so back in the fall, I planted a bunch of daffodil and tulip bulbs in those um the pots outside and so that's what I'm telling a little bit of that story here and just talking about kicking off the season in the yard I took the plastic um, monthly abbreviation there and added or I guess I haven't yet but I will be stapling that onto the top photo so I liked showing that the things are growing or in progress of growing but then also showing a photo of um, one of the daffodils that's actually open so just a little you know the perfect opportunity a little bit of journaling there I added a rolling date stamp at the bottom talking a little bit about daffodils and tulips and how much I enjoy um, getting those planted you know in the fall for the spring it's one of the first things that come up that comes up here in definitely one of the first things that blooms and it is always such a um it's just a wonderful it's one of my favorite times of year I think as as things begin to become available um in the nurseries and just the garden starts waking up again it's just something that I really um really enjoy in my own life all right, and then like I said, after I finished up that writing, I went ahead and stapled that March plastic piece on top. So that's another thing that I put in my little stash of stuff specifically for this project. Maybe I'll make a little basket for it or something or a little box or, or grab an old bag or something that I could put things in that I envision that I might use in this. So what I wanted to, to do with this particular story is in Photoshop, I cr made a collage, a photo collage for myself that had three different photos. And these are size like four and a quarter by three and, or no, by 2.75 or something like that, right? I, I, I <laughs> figured out what the math was on there. And then as I was looking at the pieces from the March Stories by the Month kit, one of them is an Around Here card. And so what I did is I took that Around Here card and I opened up, opened it up in Photoshop and adjusted the sizing so that it was going to not be six inches wide anymore, but that would be four and a quarter inches wide. And then I added my journaling below. I also did something in Photoshop where I used, um, it's called a clone tool, where you can take the background pieces of the uh, journal card and you can repeat those below it so that you can make it bigger. It's something that I do like with the sky. And if you're wanting to learn more about that, I have a specific lesson in the hybrid workshop that talks about using the clone tool, especially in photos where you want to make the sky bigger because you're wanting to add journaling. But it works great for these kinds of journal cards too, where you're wanting to continue a color or continue something that's going to go down lower. So that's where you're going to see the, the printed journaling I did. Um, I knew I wanted to use those fabric numbers for the on top of the photos there. And the other thing that I'm doing right now is knowing that I wanted to add in the these cards, right? I want to add in the um, quote card from the March Stories by the Month kit because it's perfect for what I'm talking about on here. And then I want to add in that rainbow card to you that I'm going to add the March gratitude on top of there. So what I did is I cut just a small piece of um, cardstock there it doesn't there's no requirement on how big this would have to be and I'm just folding it in half because what I want to do once I get this adhesive on the card is I'm going to stick that folded piece of cardstock on there and then I'm going to stick it down to where it will be behind the journaling that I'm going to add here into the album itself so that piece of cardstock you could use just a scrap piece of paper it doesn't have to be anything interesting at all and you can see that I'm laying the edge the folded edge right along there so that then I can take it and I can put the other card on the back 
So now I have just this flap that's available and that can be adhered down into the notebook itself, which will make this as a extra page in the notebook. And as always, my adhering the photos or the, the cards there back to back wasn't perfect. So I'm trimming off the excess and then I'm gonna stick that right down in the notebook where I've already added the red line tape and it will be able to be a page that flips or a page that turns. I love being able to add journal cards in into a notebook like this. Um, in this way, you can do this with three by four cards. You can do it with page sizes that you make up on your own, lots of different options there. And then you can see that I'm taking the around here journaling. Again, this is like four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And then I am adhering it right down with the red line tape into the album itself. So now I've got, I'm gonna have one page of a photo, the um, added in four by six cards, and then I'll have the around here um, journaling on the next page. So going ahead then grabbing my red line tape and I'm going to adhere uh, this, uh, the, the, my photo collage on top there and then I'll be adding the numbers on top. So the numbers corresponding then to the journaling where I did was able to put in one, two, and three to kind of talk a little bit about what I'm doing in the yard. And I, what, one of the cool things that I think came about from this is that I'm gonna be able to document things in here that I might not document on a regular scrapbook page. Like I wouldn't necessarily put in like, you know, these are the four different roses that I bought this year. But in this sort of an album like this, where it's really targeted and focused on these kinds of stories, I can do that, right? I can put in like, oh, you know, these are these are the four different roses that I got this year, and I'll be able to document their progress in a way that I just haven't been doing before. Um, so I'm just as you can tell, hopefully feeling really excited about this um, potential little project, and then I can share more uh, as it go as we go along during the year, and um, it'll give me some some good things to share here, both on my blog and on YouTube as well. So then I'm trimming things down just like I normally do, using my um, corner rounder to get those corners rounded, and I also rounded the corners of the journal card there that I added on the inside. I liked how that looked. These um, fabric number stickers were a recent add-on. I did notice that these have sold out for subscribers so we don't have these ones available anymore they're super cute though I would love to make some more um, like that especially with the the fabric adhesive looks really good on there so this was my three things right first of all I was soaking rose roots these are some bare root roses that I got in the mail recently from David Austin which is the really famous rose company then I had coffee sitting outside in my overalls while I was building that raised bed below which is a raised bed from a company called Vego Garden um, and I bought a couple of those from them this year to try them in a different area of my yard where I knew that I wasn't going to be planting in the ground. Um, so then the next thing I'm doing, I'm gra I grabbed the March Gratitudes card. Again, this is a card that's included in every Stories by the Month kit this year. So this is going to be perfect for adding into this particular project. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to start it today as I'm adding um, a little bit of journaling on top, but then it'll be in there and I can come back to it over the course of the month and add additional gratitudes related to the yard and things like that on there. So I really, really like how this turned out. And I like how I started with the daffodils and some handwriting on that first one, right? And just filled in, you know, using the art of noticing set up there, just was able to write directly on there. And then here's another example of one that's a little bit different, right? One where I'm including an insert in there. I typed up my journal journaling, using pieces from the March Stories by the Month kit, and now I'm going to add uh, the sky on there as well. And again, this sort of thing, you know, you can end up doing as much or as little embellishing as you want. And you might be, you know, you might want to be using more pieces from the Rainbow kit in this particular thing. I think that I probably will over the course of the months, but what it became really for me was, um, this was the jumping off point, right? The, the Rainbow kit became the jumping off point for this idea of something that I wanted to put together. All right, so then you see the first few pages there. Then the next thing that I wanted to do was I wanted to take one of the pattern papers, one of the 12 by 12 pattern papers, and I'm gonna cut it to fit inside the album so that it will be covering up both pages of, of a spread. And what I wanted to do with this one in particular is I wanted to use it as the background. I'm cutting it down obviously again into four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. Um, I wanted to, to use this as a background for some goals or some things that I'm looking forward to in my yard. And one of the things that I have had here on my desk for, I don't know how long now, I'm not really sure actually how old these are, somebody's gonna know out there, are some tags that we released at some point 
point or another, they might have been in a kit or they were an add-on. I kind of thought they were an add-on at first, and then I thought maybe they were um, included in a kit at some point or another. Uh, but I'm going to use those as the jumping off point to document some of my goals for the yard or things that I want to, things that I want to have happen this year in my yard, right? Each year things look a little bit different. I've learned, I learned things last year that I'm going to incorporate this year. Um, just different things that I want to try. And then also being able to witness some of the things that I have already put in place. Um, I planted some peonies last fall too. So those I want to see how those are going to come up. They're just actually starting to come up in the ground right now. Um, it's going to be a couple months before those are even close to being ready right now. They are tiny uh, little purple shoots that, that start. So my peonies all um, die all the way to the ground and then come back up again. And so this, that would be a perfect story to tell, right? especially in March of what are the first, what are the first signs of, of those blooming out in the yard? So again, um, love this opportunity to incorporate larger pattern papers into a notebook project like this. Obviously you can always take those pattern papers and cut them down to whatever size it is that you might want to be using. Um, but I really liked how this one looked and something that I did in the past, like on the summer notebook, if you love this style of notebook, go back and check out my past videos for working in a traveler's notebook. Like I said, I did a lot of those, um, last summer and then shared them, I think on a lot of the Friday craft the story uh, videos too. Let's see. So one of the things I did when I did just a pattern paper background like that was simply adding a journal card on top, like a three by four journal card on top of there or a photo. Um, you know, just it can be as simple as you want it to be, especially if it's a pattern paper that you love or you love the look of. Um, sometimes it's nice to just let those live on their own, right? And let them breathe and just add a little bit of something. Uh, so I think especially when you're working in a notebook. So just getting that stuff all trimmed out, getting everything set to the right size before I start adding in these tags. So these are the tags that I was talking about. I don't remember which thing that they were from, but they've been sitting on my desk, on my table for months because I knew that at some point I was going to find a way to use them. I knew I wanted to use them. I love repeated shapes. I love things with numbers, which is what you're seeing right here. Those always make me super happy. So what I decided to do was use this as a way to document things I'm looking forward to in the yard. And one of the ways I, I knew I wanted to add a title here. So I decided to cut some plastics. So this is the graphics plastic sheets that I talk about that I use for transparencies or used for page foundations. And I'm just trimming it down to the same exact size. I'm going to use that We Are Memory Keepers hole punch to get the hole punch size in there. And then on top of there, I'm going to use the puffy letter stickers that I used earlier this week in another rainbow project. And I'm going to put uh, yard goals, yard goal, yard goals, something like that on top of there because it's something that can live on there but then I can also set it up to where it can turn off of the journaling so that if you want to read the specific journaling you'll be able to do that as well so those are the things that I'm kind of setting up here I'm using the gold ones again because I have the most letters for the gold again this is still I just love this alphabet I just think these look so great um, all together there so in this case I'm starting with the beginning of the word because I know where I want these to go. Um, I, in a perfect world, it would have been just two four letter words. Uh, I could just have it say yard goal, but then I knew I wanted it to say goals and then it didn't fit exactly as I wanted it to originally, but I'm just leaving it because I think it, it, it serves the purpose that I wanted it uh, to serve overall. So they're adding on yard goals and we do have these, if you like these gold um, alpha stickers, we do still have these available. I think we have the black um, too. There's a couple of them in the shop and I'd love to have more colors of these uh, in the future too. I just think that they're a really um, fun thing to work with. And now you can see where I'm going to add the S on there and I kind of pick it up and put it down like multiple times. I, in this case, uh, I am not going to use all of these. I think there were nine total um, in this particular set. I'm just going to use the six that I need to tell the story. And then I will probably put the other extra little tag 
bags into my stash because they're definitely something that could be used. Um, I could cover up the random numbers that are going to be on there, right? They're going to have the eight and the nine, but I could still um, add an embellishment on top of there, add a photo on top. I just think that there, it's a really cute shape that could be easily repeated. The other thing I did was I went to the February Stories by the Month kit and got, grabbed the word currently, which is a stamp again on that February Stories by the Month kit stamp this year. And I'm just adding those on there because it's like currently what are my goals, right? What are my current goals for the yard right now? And that's what I am going to write down on top of each of those. So when I was figuring out how I wanted to lay this out, I knew I still wanted to go in that general direction. I knew I wasn't going to use these other two. I got out some ribbon to consider doing just a little bit of ribbon through each one of these. But then even as I was doing that, I was like, oh, but I have these. Got some eyelets and I kind of want to use them. And I feel like maybe that'll just be enough of a little bit of something on here without doing the ribbons because my ribbons weren't an exact match. Um, I think the last time that I used some eyelets was in December Daily this year and it was fun to bring those back out again. But I love how that looks, like that just looks a little bit more like a tag and I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be able to do that on this one with the title and you'll still be able to flip it open there to see that other side. Let's try that and see if that works. I think it's going to work. I'm using a crocodile. This is just like old school, old school tools, right? Super fun. Okay. I love this. I especially love, I know I, I think I said this already too, but the, I've had these tags. They were an add on for a kit at some point in time over the last probably six months or so. And they have just been waiting here on my table for me to use them. Just waiting, just waiting for that. For a story to come up so this is a fun way to be able to use them especially using them in conjunction with um, this stuff from the rainbow kit all right after i got all of those eyelets on there i went ahead and started the process of adhering things down again using the red line tape i started with the middle uh, tag on this one to just get it in the center of where i wanted it placed and then uh, went ahead and adhered the other things around uh, there again just using red line tape uh, for all of those as well then I came back into that March gratitudes uh, page and wrote a little bit about sunshine it's been really beautiful and sunny here um, at the beginning of March which is fantastic and I will totally take all of that um, every day it's just such a nice switch in in the weather around here i mean it could still get really cold here but at least we've got had some sunshine it's pretty gray today but we've had sunshine and that's been made me even more excited to get outside all right finishing up adding this guy in there just a little bit more red line tape you guys if you were here in my office you would laugh because those red pieces they get stuck everywhere they're like really staticky so when i even when i throw them in my garbage they're like all over all over everywhere because they because of that static part they jump out all right i added a date on that one i also added a date on the um not that one on this one the around here one added that on the top love how this came together let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below